This video is sponsored by Anchor Work. What's going on guys, it's your boy Shivon here back with another another desk setup upgrades part eight so i'm super excited for this one because we have tons of products my desk era is looking crazy right now i need to upgrade my desk the cable management is bad i just have tons of unnecessary stuff it needs to be sorted out also i haven't been gaming that much so this is going to be a productivity desk setup upgrade with the m1 macbook pro super excited for this one so as you can see behind me right here we have tons of new products that i just have been just chilling here i was waiting until i moved out but i didn't move out in time so i was like you know what i'm tired i need to upgrade the setup so tons of products here we have the nano leaf panels i'm not sure where i'm gonna put them yet but that's gonna look really sick we also have this huge monitor here from benq the ex 2710q which is a 2k monitor 165 hertz crazy good we also have the anchor power config c300 camera which i'll get deeper into this is a really nice camera since i'll have my macbook docked off to the side we also have this monitor arm here from shopping hall all links will be down below in the description but one of the major upgrades is we'll be changing out the desk so i'll be using the autonomous smart desk pro is the best one you could get and also the autonomous desk for the tabletop so yeah really excited about everything guys i'm doing too much talking Let's jump into this. We have a lot to do. Let's go. So before we start, I just wanted to go over everything again. So I'm going to remove this, these monitors from here. Add the new BenQ monitor. MacBook Pro is going to go right there. The main thing that's really bugging me right now is just my cable management. It's so bad. So I'm really excited to fix that as well. We have the new platform right here, which is the, from Autonomous. We have the cable management tree from Autonomous, the monitors, all that. So a new desk, have to get rid of this one. I'm gonna put the PC in the living area. So that would be like a dedicated, this is now my productivity setup for now. You know, have to get rid of the plant. I think I'm gonna put the nano leaves somewhere up here. You know, have to get rid of that M1 MacBook. Look at this new Travis Scott art that I have right here. That's really cool. But yeah, now enough of the talking, all this mess is going, time to get to work. Okay, this is day two. I just finished moving my desk out of my bedroom. Now I have my autonomous tabletop outside. We have the autonomous platform desk right here. Together that's gonna make the autonomous smart desk pro. We also have the autonomous cable race, um, cable tray for cable management. So now all I have to do is just clean up the room, vacuum out everything, make it look nice, and yeah. <laughs> Okay, so one thing I truly needed to upgrade was my desk. My previous tabletop was from Ikea and honestly, it did its time. There were dents in the desk and it was just a lot of scratches, it scratched really easily, so I just needed to get rid of it. The desk frame that I was using was a prototype so everything wasn't working 100% so I decided that I needed to go back to the Autonomous Smart Desk Pro and this works perfectly fine. I can set my custom desk heights and the controller is smart enough to remember up to four presets so I could just click one button and go into my preferred standing or sitting height. 
this is a very sturdy desk as well i could literally sit on it while it's moving and it's not wobbling it's not shaking and it still handles my weight additionally it's always nice to have a sit stand desk especially for me since i have back problems so it's always nice to switch up my position while working so i don't have to put too much strain on my back and just overall to get the blood flowing the tabletop that I went for this time is also from Autonomous. It's the Autonomous Smart Desk Surface and for the first time I'll be using their XL tabletop. For a long while it wasn't available in Canada but I think it's finally here. One nice touch is that it also has the two cable management slots around the back of the tabletop and I just neatly tucked my wireless charger through for a nice clean look. Overall it's the perfect length for my space which is 70.5 inches long and 30 inches wide so I have no issues fitting my peripherals and monitor on here speaking about monitors well hello there this is the brand new benq ex 2710q and oh my this is a very beautiful monitor the overall build quality is stellar this benq ex 2710q came equipped with some amazing built-in speakers from travolo i do miss out on a little bit of audio quality here but most of the time, I use my Logitech G733 headset anyways. I have it placed on this headset stand from Tilted Nation. And no, I didn't use it because it's white and have RGB effects. It also has two additional USB 3.0 ports built into it, which comes in handy. So back to the monitor. This is a 27 inch 2560x1440p monitor with a buttery smooth 160Hz refresh rate and also a 1 millisecond response time. So if I ever feel like gaming, I could just swap out my MacBook for my gaming laptop and I would be good to go. I tested games like Valorant, Fortnite, Call of Duty and they all ran smoothly without any screen tearing or delays thanks to the AMD FreeSync technology. Now when I'm not gaming, I'm either editing videos pictures, watching YouTube videos, Twitch streams, or even writing up a script on Notion, and this display does not disappoint. This hits 95% of the DCI-P color space, which is great. I also replaced the monitor stand with a monitor arm from Shopping All. It's fully adjustable and matches the aesthetic perfectly. Yes, the monitor stand that it comes with looks cool and all, but I just wasn't feeling it. This one from Shopping All, it's white, it has built-in USB ports, audio stuff, Overall, it looks clean, it makes my monitor look like it's floating, and I have a ton more space on the desk to add my other peripherals. Now, onto the beast the M1 Pro MacBook. This is what's pouring my entire setup. This brand new M1 Pro MacBook is on top of this Grove made bamboo laptop stand. It looks amazing. I went with the space gray finish for the laptop, 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU, and 32 gigs of unified RAM. I decided to also opt for the one terabyte of internal SSD storage, which I think is plenty enough since I use external storage anyways. Overall, this laptop is a beast. I've been using it every single day since it has been released and this is by far my favorite laptop for productivity it pushes through all my edits without breaking a sweat import speeds are fast ssd transfers are amazing this is all connected through the hdmi port so yeah this is almost like 2015 all over again on the new macbooks we got the hdmi port back SD card slot, but I'm still using this USB-C dock from Anchor that adds two more USB-C ports, two USB 3.0 ports, a SD card, a micro SD card slot, and also one more HDMI port. One thing though, if you are a touch bar fan, it's no longer there. Instead, we now have a notch. So yeah, I think this notch was for a better webcam quality. And yeah, I could see the difference here. We now have a 1080p webcam, which is great for calls on the go. But one thing Apple missed out on is not adding center stage functionality. And since the laptop is docked off to the side, instead I'm using this new webcam from Anchor, the C300. And this webcam is really, really good, especially if you need that wide field of view. The build quality is really nice. It fits in right with my other peripherals perfectly. It's connected through a single USB-C cable from my laptop. And this is what it looks like. Okay, now we're on the Anchor C300. And look how wide this is, 115 degrees field of view. I have pretty large hands, guys. Trust me, my wingspan is crazy and it's still within the shot right now. The Anchor C300 webcam doesn't only have 115 degrees field of view for nothing. 
It also uses the software in the Anchor Work app using AI technology to follow me as I move around the room. Basically the same thing as Apple's center stage feature. This is great for presenters or even gamers who are very exciting and move around the room a lot. Now diving into the Anchor Work software, there's tons of features you could play around with. You have HDR that you could toggle on and off. You have also anti-flickering, which is great if you have LED lights inside your room. You could also play around with the brightness, the sharpness, change the color temperature, tons of things to get the perfect image that you desire. Thanks again, Anchor Work, for sponsoring today's video. And if you guys didn't know, Anchor Work is a sub brand of Anchor who now creates products that not only facilitate the remote work experience, they also empower people to develop a work style and environment that is completely personalized. If you want links to this, I'll make sure to leave them down below in the description. For audio, I'm using the HyperX Quadcast S, which is mounted on the Elgato mic arm. I was excited to try this mic because for one, let's be real, it just looks really cool with all the RGB lights and secondly, I've heard nothing but good stuff about it. All the voiceover you've been hearing throughout this entire video was recorded on the HyperX Quadcast S, so let me know what you guys think about it. This mic is packed with features like up to four different pickup patterns such as stereo, omnidirectional, cardioid, and bidirectional. So if you like to do ASMR stuff, this might be the perfect mic for you. I like the fact that this mic also has a mute button at the top where you could just tap to instantly mute yourself. And it also has a headphone jack for audio monitoring and is powered by a USB type C cable, which is nice to see. Now, lighting is always important to me, especially in my workspace. I wanted to spice things up more in the setup and there's only one way to do so. Yes, by adding some Nanoleaf products. I used the Nanoleaf light strip around the back of my desk and that definitely made the setup more lively. Off to the right side of my desk, I went with the Nanoleaf shapes and I've always seen these in desk setup videos but I thought I didn't need one. I am so happy I got them. They really bring a lively vibe not only to my desk setup but to my room itself. These lights get really bright, they're also controlled and connected through my Google Assistant and also I could use my phone to control the different lights, change the colors, add different presets, all of that fun stuff and it's overall just makes life easier to use it that way and in general so much fun to play around with. Some other things that I brought over from my desk setup are the Elgato key lights, my Novel Keys mechanical keyboard with the MX Master 3 of course. Below that is my Orbit Key desk mat which really sets a nice contrast from the white tabletop and I recently got into wrist rest. This one I'm using is actually from ASUS and it feels really comfortable when typing. Of course, we still have the Google Home Assistant, my chair which is the Mavix M9. I've been using it for around 7 months now and it's just perfect. My Elgato Stream Deck for all my streaming needs and my custom buttons. And last but not least, this MagSafe Twin One wireless charger from Banks. Overall, I really love how my setup turned out and I'm still just in shock as to how good this M1 Pro MacBook is. And I mean, even though I ditch my PC, I probably won't start using my PC again until I get the new Intel i9 Alder Lake processors. So for now, it's Team Apple. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. What would you switch? What would you upgrade? What would you change? Let me know. As always, guys, love, peace, and tweaks. Whoa, before I go, hashtag M1 Pro if you made it this far. So I know you guys are real ones. All right, signing out.